Well, good morning, Beaver Dam. It is Pastor Owen coming to you live from Beaver Dam and Rousey's Chapel. And today is Tuesday, this, uh, October the 3rd. And uh, you're joining us for our time of reflections. This is a time where we gather Monday through Thursday to read some scripture together, to spend some time in prayer with the scripture, and then to hear some, uh, some uh, a posting from our daily devotion based on John Wesley's sermons. So if you happen to be joining us live or throughout the day, I invite you to, uh, to, to let us know that you're there like my mom just did. And, uh, and if this devotion time is spoken to you in a special way, I invite you to hit that like and share key so that others can also uh, partake of the, so that others can also um, maybe see what's going on here in Beaver Dam. So our text for today uh, comes from the New Testament, from the book of James, and it's chapter 4, verses 4 through 12. So uh, let's delve into the text and see what the see what the writer of James James has for us this morning. James chapter four verses four through twelve, and I'm reading from the Common English Bible translation. You unfaithful people, don't you know that friendship with the world means hostility towards God? So whoever wants to be the world's friend becomes God's enemy. Or do you suppose that scripture is meaningless? Doesn't God long for our faithfulness in the life that he has given to us? But he has given us more grace. That's why it says, God stands against the proud, but favors the humble. Therefore, submit to God, resist the devil, and he will run away from you. Come near to God, and he will come near to you. Wash your hands, you sinners. Purify your hearts, you double-minded. Cry out in sorrow, mourn and weep. Let your laughter become mourning and your joy become sadness. Humble yourselves before the Lord and he will lift you up. Brothers and sisters, don't say evil things about each other. Whoever insults or criticizes a brother or sister insults and criticizes the law. If you find fault with the law, you're not a doer of the law, but a judge over it. There is only one lawgiver and judge, and he is able to save and to destroy. But you who judge your neighbor, who are you? <laughs> Some pretty good... Uh... Pretty good language this morning. I enjoy this text. So uh, let's go ahead and spend a little bit of time in prayer with the text. We'll be focusing in on verse 7 this morning. And uh, as we've done, we'll, we'll read it in different translations and spend some, some quiet time and just let it sit and resonate and uh, pick up on any differences and similarities that you see in the different translations. So let's go to the Lord in prayer this morning. Let us clear our minds and let us focus on God. James chapter 4 verse 7 from the King James Version. Submit yourselves therefore to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. From the New Revised Standard Version. Submit yourselves, therefore, to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you.
from the Common English Bible. Therefore, submit to God, resist the devil, and he will run away from you. From the New Living Translation. So humble yourselves before God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. from the message translation. So let God work his will in you. Yell a loud no to the devil and, and watch him make himself scarce. Say a quiet yes to God and he'll be there in no time. Amen. Amen. So we're continuing to use the Renew My Heart. And the one for, uh, the one for today uh, is entitled, Did You Renounce? Did You Renounce the Devil? Consider the case of the one who affirms he was born again in baptism, yet remains an open sinner. I say to that one, if you have been baptized, do not admit it, for how highly aggravates your guilt and how it will increase your damnation. If you were devoted to God in your baptism and yet all along you've been devoting yourself to the devil, you were consecrated to God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and ever since you've been flying in the face of God, giving yourself to Satan. You have done all of this, even though you were once solemnly given up to God. Oh, be ashamed, blush, hide yourself in the earth. Never again boast of what ought to fill you with confession to make you ashamed before God and all mankind. You have denied your baptism in the most effectual manner a thousand times and day by day. For in baptism, you renounce the devil and all his works. Whenever you give place to him, again, by doing any of the works of the devil, then you deny your baptism. But whenever you are baptized, or but whether you are baptized or unbaptized, you must be born again. Otherwise, it's not possible you should be inward holy. And without inward as well as outward holiness, you cannot be happy even in this world, much less in the world to come. Hmm. So it's uh, some pretty good readings from, from Wesley this morning. And, you know, it, it kind of looks like to me that Wesley is uncoupling being born again and our baptism. And I wondered exactly what it means. Because, you know, we believe that you don't have to be baptized in order to receive salvation. So I wonder if we should be thinking about this uh, being born again as almost a daily activity. Saying yes to God and no 
to the devil. I think that's what part of our scripture was getting at today is submitting ourselves to God, saying yes to God, and so that we can so that we can have the power and the ability to resist the, the, the things of the world, or as the scripture puts it, the devil. Just some thoughts. Would love to hear your 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 ideas on this, whether or not you were seeing the same thing, or maybe I'm just off in left field. I don't know. But uh, it's definitely worth the discussion. So uh, let's go ahead and uh, get ready to take on the day. Let's, let's close with a word of prayer this morning. Let us pray. God, we thank you. We thank you for each and every day that you give us. We thank you for this beautiful fall day where the sun is shining and the leaves are beginning to change colors. God, we thank you for your presence in our lives in all of those ways that we see and feel um, your loving grace that abounds. God, we know that sometimes life gives us things that are difficult to handle, that we struggle with. But God, we also know that if we lean into our faith and get closer to you, those things may, even though they may not go away, they will become easier because we know that we're not alone, that you're right there with us. Lord, we ask that you be with all of those who are suffering today, whether they're suffering from physical illnesses or maybe some mental challenges or financial issues, or maybe they're feeling a little neglected and uh, overlooked. God, whatever is, is causing pain and grief and uh, sorrow, we ask that you let those folks know that you're near and let us know that you're near. Let us look for the ways that you're active in our lives and open our eyes to see them. God, we ask for all of these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, friends, remember that this is a day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Go in peace, y'all. Bye for now.